In the last video, we worked out how much energy there was in a magnetic field by looking at the energy fed into an inductor. Now let's do the same thing for an electric field. This will be a bit of a revision of capacitors for you. Electric field in a capacitor. Let's apply a voltage to it. As the current flows in due to this voltage, the electric field will increase as the charge builds up. We know there's some voltage across it here. And so the power in is just the current times the voltage. So what we need to do is sum that up over the entire charging process, add up all the, pow all the powers, you know, the one watt for one second, two watts for two seconds, add them all together to work out how much energy has gone into the capacitor. And that must be the energy of the electric field inside. OK, so how do we do that? Well, the total energy is going to be the integral from the starting time to the finishing time of I V D T, power dt. Now, we know that the voltage across the capacitor is just equal to and we know that the voltage across the capacitor is equal to the charge divided by the capacitance. We also know that the current is equal to the rate of change of the charge. So factoring those both in, we find that the power is 1 over the capacitance, Q dQ by dt. So plug that into the integral, so we've got the energy equals 1 over C, integral from the starting time to the finishing time, Q dQ by dt dt. Now once again we can do that trick that the mathematicians hate and cancel the dt's. So that just comes out as 1 over the capacitance, the integral from the starting charge, which will be 0, to the finishing charge of Q dQ, which is just going to be 1 over 2 times the capacitance, final charge squared. OK, so that's told us how much energy has gone into as a function of the final charge. What we need to do, though, is work out what it is as a function of the final electric field. Now, from the study of capacitors we did last semester, we know that charge equals electric field times epsilon naught times the area for two parallel plates. And we also know that the capacitance equals epsilon naught area over D. So let's substitute those both in and we find that the energy equals 1 over 2 d over epsilon naught a e epsilon naught a squared. Just substituting these into that equation over there. And simplifying, we find out that that comes out as 1 over 2 epsilon naught. Then we've got d times a which is just the volume inside the capacitor, the cross-sectional area times the thickness, times E squared. So what that tells us is that the energy per unit volume is just one half epsilon naught E squared for an electric field. So if you have both electric and magnetic fields, you just add them up from our result from the last video, and the total energy per unit volume is a contribution from the electric field, plus the combination from the magnetic field. So basically, with some constants, it depends on the square of the electric field plus the square of the magnetic field. And that's the energy of apparently empty space where there are electric and magnetic fields present.